Hello, I'm Grayson Ottaway. Welcome back. This is Marvelous Videos. Since animation has been a form of expression for well over a century, viewers may choose from hundreds of animated TV programs and more that are created daily. It makes sense that certain shows will eventually become lost in the sea of content that's available for watching. Some of the forgotten cartoons should undoubtedly stay that way, while others are incredible hidden gems that are just waiting to be rediscovered. Even if a cartoon hasn't frequently come up in conversations about animation, it nonetheless could have virtues. The first episode of Jace and the Wheeled Warriors aired on American television in September 1985. In the story, a scientist developed a plant that would end world hunger, but when the plant came into contact with radiation from a nearby supernova explosion, it evolved into a monster. Jace and his team fought the monster-like plants, commonly known as monster mines, using specialized silver and gold vehicles. The heroes had to find Jace's father and combine the two halves of of a mystical route in order to destroy the monster mines. It seems that Jace and the Wheeled Warriors didn't receive as much attention given its competition, which included shows like Thundercats and He-Man and the Masters of the Universe. Before we go into our explanation, a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to this channel. Very small click for you, but for us, it means a great deal. Thank you so much. Right, let's go. Don't have to tell me twice, sonny. What the cartoon series is all about. On September 16, 1985, the animated television series Jace and the Wheeled Warriors made its debut. It was produced by DIC Entertainment and animated by an unidentified Japanese studio that SFM Entertainment had initially syndicated. To advertise Mattel's toy line, simply titled Wheeled Warriors, a television show which aired 65 30 minute episodes was created. Despite having an ongoing story, Storyline, the show, like many others made at the same time, lacks a series finale, therefore the plot is still today unresolved. The program included two competing groups, the so-called Good Guys, the Lightning League, are humans, they were led by Jace, and drove white and silver vehicles that were armed to the teeth. The Bad Guys were the Monster Mines, organic green vegetable-based entities that commonly took the shape of black and green automobiles. They travel by using large green biological vines that they may extend over intergalactic space. These vines produce seeds, and those seeds soon develop into new monster mines. The boss is Saw Boss. The majority of the episodes were written by two French writers, Heiskal Barkin and Jean Chalopin. J. Michael Strazinski, who was famously one of the staff writers for Filmation's He-Man and the Masters of the Universe, served as the program's producer. More than five years later, he would also conceive and act as the show's lead writer for the television series Babylon 5, which boasts an all-orchestra musical composition by Shuki Levy and a theme song composed by him Sieben, as the two have for many of DC's productions. In the UK, it was broadcast on Sky Channel and Channel 4 on Sunday mornings. The television show Jace et les Conqueron de la Lumière, sometimes referred to as Jace and Warriors of Light, had its French television premiere on TF1's Les Petits Lumières on September 9, 1985. It had its first run syndication premiere in the US seven days later. It was replayed on USA's Cartoon Express program after 10 years. For the Lightning League and the Monster Mines, DIC and Strazinski created distinct characters since, unlike He-Man. No context, though, was given to the toys until they entered a battle. This made it possible for a compelling plot. The story revolves around Jace, Odric's son and his desire to get back together with him. Odric was a botanist who experimented with biotechnology on a number of occasions, one of which produced the young Flora, a humanoid female. In order to stop cosmic hunger, Odric also had created a miraculous crop that could thrive in any environment. However, the radiation explosion from a solar flare changed his plant into a malicious, sentient being, and it also changed other plants into similar monsters. These beings are referred to as the 
monster mines, and Sorbos is their leader. Odric is forced to flee before he can complete creating a magical route that can destroy the monster mines, and they take over his laboratory and use it as their headquarters. The laboratory has the ability to teleport to other places thanks to a mysterious power source known as the Power of the Black Light. Half of the route is given to Odric's servant, Un, who is in charge of caring for Jace, while he keeps the other half for himself. As a result, Odric is always being sought out by Jace and his Lightning League comrades. Due to poor toy sales, Jace's 65-episode run came to an end without a resolution. According to Strazinski, a movie was also commissioned along with the series, just like with the previous toy-based animated programs like Transformers and G.I. Joe. If toy sales for the series had been successful, production would have begun. Following the failure of the toy line and Strazinski's script, the movie's production was placed on hold. After Jace's Lightning League met with the original Lightning League and underwent instruction on the planet of the Guardians, he would have felt closure if the film had been created. Jace would team up with the Root and slay Sorbos in the last battle, putting a stop to the monster mind threat permanently. He would be reunited with his father Odric, but Strazinski claimed that when monster minds launched their last attack on the cosmos, Sorbos would have killed Odric. Wield Warrior's toy launch failed miserably. The toys made their debut on shop shelves just in time for the holiday season in 1984, before the animation aired. The manufacturer panicked and pulled them off the shelves before the animated series could establish a following. Moreover, the toys had blank slate individuals and rubber brains for pilots, in contrast to the animated series' genuine human characters, vehicle-transforming monster mind bosses, and hordes of plant-born troopers. The cartoon barely ever employed any other weapons than the toys' guns and lasers. Initially released in the French comic book Peef, Gadget number 922 was an uncredited, incomplete comic based on the series. The 13-page tale had a peculiar cliffhanger ending, and neither the conclusion nor the sequel was included in the next issue of Pifti. One of the characters made specifically for the comic was Algora, a young sorceress with white hair who functioned as Saw Boss's ally. The main characters and casts of the series. Jace, voiced by Darren Baker, he was the leader of the Lightning League. He was in possession of the Ring of Light and a portion of the Magic Root, which was the League's constant Doe Machina. Odric, voiced by Dan Hennessy, he was Jace's father and the first master of Un. He generated the Magic Root and possessed half of it. He also accidentally co-created the first Lightning League vehicles, the Monster Mines and Flora. Herc Stormsailor, voiced by Len Carlson, was a mercenary in the image of Han Solo piloting a space barge dubbed Pride of the Skies 2. He had been anticipating the day when he would be paid for transporting the Lightning League across the galaxy after Jillian had tricked him into doing so by giving him lead bars with a gold tint. It was revealed in the episode Affair of Honor that he had previously served as an intergalactic commando. Jillian, voiced by Charles Jalif, was the wizardly advisor advisor to Jace, who also worked on Flora and the initial Lightning League vehicles. He later created other Lightning League vehicles. He's both a magician and a scientist, and he's reported to be centuries old. Flora, voiced by Valadi Politi, she was a little girl created from a flower. She has telepathic skills, the ability to communicate empathically with animals and sense the monster minds. Un, voiced by Luba Goy, was a little eternal squire that was made of magically suited armor. Un is devoted to serving his master, Jace, despite his outward appearance of cowardice. Sorbos, voiced by Giyu Kukuragia, can transform into a massive saw trooper and was the head of the monster mines, but he doesn't have the same recognizable stripes as the troopers. Victory over the changing form of Sawboss. Wheeled warriors explode into battle. Amazing vehicles in the show. While the Lightning League members may drive the vehicles, they can also execute battle plans without drivers by receiving orders through Jace's communicator. On top of the vehicle known as Armed Force is a large golden grapple arm. Jillian gave Jace the gift she had intended for Odric after he was unable to join the League. It features two seats in contrast to its toy counterpart. The stack and attack gimmick 
used by the toy version of the armed force is another thing to note. By removing their wheeled chassis, any of the other smaller vehicles might be attached to the top of the armed force. On top of the vehicle known as armed force is a large golden grapple arm. Although in the show, the phrase stack and attack refers to the Lightning League vehicle's ability to change weapons mid-battle. A drill for digging tunnels was included in the two-seater drill sergeant. Flora drives it in the opening scene, and Gillian seems to support her decision. A shield covering a handgun was mounted on the roof of the quick-draw automobile. Although Gillian drives it in the first episode of the series, he is not the vehicle's usual driver. It has a single seat. The three-wheeled spike trike was designed for speed. It's the car that Herc uses in the series opening scene and throughout the rest of it. The Trailblazer is a large four-wheeled vehicle with a battering ram up front that can carry smaller vehicles. There are usually just enough chairs for one person, but occasionally there are four more. Despite being more durable and long-lasting than the other vehicles, the Trailblazer was used far less frequently for unstated reasons. The Trailblazer is demonstrated to be noticeably larger in comparison to the other vehicles than its toy competitors. The toy version of Trailblazer could only transport one smaller vehicle on its back, as opposed to the animated version, which could transport four of the smaller vehicles through a platform that fell from its underbelly. The Pride typically acts as a link between Battle Base, a mobile fortress where all the other vehicles are housed, and the rest of the vehicles. A large elevating gun turret serves as Battle Base's primary armament. Compared to its toy equivalent, Battle Base is far bigger in the animation than Trailblazer. The Battle Base playset had a control bridge with space for two personnel and three garages, each of which could fit a single smaller vehicle. Trailblazer was shown in the series to have access to Battle Base, in addition to having room for all of the lesser vehicles. There was a fair amount of open space on its bridge. The Flingshot, a vehicle with a catapult, was built in the Stallions of Sandine. A toy was intended, however, it was never produced. Although it didn't have an introduction episode, the Spray Gunner was a later addition to the series and was a vehicle with a cannon that sprayed various substances. The toy, though, was never manufactured. Motor Module was a low-riding vehicle with a powerful drive system that was commonly employed to deliver cargo or to carry out on-site maintenance on other vehicles. Because it was introduced later in the show's run, there is no opening episode. The toy, which was designed to be powered and able to stack attack like the armed force, was never put into production. The space barge Pride of the Skies 2, sometimes known as just the Pride, is owned by Herc Stormsailor and serves as the headquarters for the Lightning League throughout the whole of the series. Small bikes are called space scooters in the show. The emergency cruiser, the Pride's shuttlecraft, was rarely used. Most battles carried out by monster mines feature vine-grown copies of the original monster mines. Sawboss may use a clone as a conduit to telepathically communicate with both of these clones and with other people. Their nicknames include Saw Trooper, Terra Trooper, KO Trooper, and other variations on the word Trooper. Despite being far larger and more powerful than their mass-produced clones, the true monster mines change from their humanoid forms into vehicles when they depart their center of operations. Large buzz saws are placed on moving stalks and are part of vehicles known as saw troopers. Terra troopers are tank-like vehicles with a huge Venus flytrap-like mouth fitted onto the body. Gun trooper vehicles feature a number of cannons clenched in their jaws. The main weapon was a multi-headed spiky flail mounted on top of the body. KO troopers are vehicles that resemble trucks and have a long stalk that looks like a wrecking ball. A massive four-legged vehicle with a front-mounted claw weapon was known as Beast Walker and served as the backbone of a monster mind clone army. They were infrequently used since they needed more energy to spawn. Flapjacks, van-like vehicles with a catapult, were planned but never produced for the toy line. Lurchers, once more, were vehicles with a front ram that wasn't from the toy series. The front-mounted petals of smaller four-legged walking vehicles, known as snapdragons, would open up like flowers to expose laser cannons. Battle stations, the monster mind's answer to battle base, was left out of the toy line. Since it needed so much energy to spawn, it was only ever utilized once. Larger monster mine spaceships were called cruisers. Smaller monster mine spaceships were called scouts or satellites. In the animation, the same class of vehicle was referred to by both names. Small rocket craft called drill vines were employed to puncture targets and release a vine growth. A monster mind vine cluster was found within the drill's nose cone. Cruisers or scouts could deploy pods, which resemble 
or plants if drill vines are not necessary. Space fighters, tiny monster mine star fighters, were used far less frequently than scouts. Gillian's magic is worn off. Take him! What happened to the cartoon? Was the show cancelled too soon? Sort of. The majority of the episodes were standalone stories, and the show's main narrative line was simply that Jace was supposed to be hunting for his father. In addition, it had 65 episodes, which was typical for animated television shows at the time. Since the program did not seem to be successful, and the toys didn't sell well, the first episode order was not extended. A movie that would have served as the series finale was never produced since there was little interest in the property. Is a reboot necessary? Siri? Perhaps. It wasn't very excellent because the first season's main objective was to promote products. However, the project did have some intriguing ideas at its heart, and if JMS were to helm the remake, it may end up being a good piece of science fiction animation. Jace could get a second shot as a result of the large number of 1980 shows waiting to be rebooted, but unless JMS itself was pushing for the relaunch, it seems doubtful that this one would go that path considering considering that it has been essentially forgotten. Early in his career, J. Michael Straczynski contributed to a variety of family-friendly television shows, including Jace and the Wheeled Warriors. As was already known, he wrote for He-Man and the Masters of the Universe and She-Ra, Princess of Power. He would later contribute to the live-action CGI series Captain Power and the Soldiers of Future, as well as the animated series The Real Ghostbusters. Despite the fact that the whole series had Edition is no longer available, the show is still available on DVD. However, independent retailers may still have it available. Despite the possibility of finding episodes on YouTube, any currently aware of any streaming services that provide it isn't known. The Wheeled Warriors toy line had already been discontinued before the first episode of this series aired on television. The Lightning League Against the Devouring Monster Mines was the original narrative created by Mattel, but the management at DIC thought this plot would never work on television, and they were right in thinking that since that kind of cruelty was forbidden at the time. The Wheeled Warriors line, which was rather extensive, included a number of unique vehicles and accessories. It's interesting to note that the people associated with the cars had nothing to do with the later debuting series. The toy sales were already disappointing when the series started, and shortly the product was discontinued. However, collectors are now prepared to pay a very high price for them. The Marvelous Verdict It is very clear after watching a number of episodes in a row that the series isn't terrible, but it is horribly uneven and somewhat tedious on top of that. It could be a bit more entertaining for people who prefer science fiction and fantasy, of course. The DVDs look and sound better than you'd expect for a program that is more than 20 years old, and the few extras are interesting enough to offer the collection some extra value. Although, keep your expectations in check if you want to watch this vintage animated relic with other members of your 1980s generation. If you liked our video, please leave a like and do subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Tell us who else you would like us to explore as well. Till then, ciao and take care.